Hi there, this is Carrie coming to you from Rolex 2011. I am here with one of the riders, Boyd Martin. Um, Boyd, thanks so much for spending some time with us this afternoon. Apparently you're quite the busy guy, so we do appreciate that. First things first, the cats. Tell us about these cats and the infamous Hooters t-shirt. Well, unfortunately, my wife uh, sent a picture into the Chronicle of the Horse magazine about my affection for my feline friends, and uh, it's created a little bit of a havoc in the equestrian world, uh, but now I've been very fond of cats for many years, and uh, quite comfortable with the idea. All right. I think as long as you don't start bringing them around on harnesses and leashes, I think you'll be all right. Well, I was thinking about bringing them along to this one, but they don't, they don't like getting away from home that much, to be quite honest. There you go. And you ride in Eagle Gold saddle pads. Yep, I've been uh, using Eco, Eco Gold saddle pads for uh, about two years now. Not only the saddle pads, but the, the cross country boots. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of their tack, you know. Yeah. Uh, they got wonderful show jumping boots, and uh, they've they're really the leaders in equestrian products. They've, they're advancing technologies all the right. time, and they're a fantastic company that has really assisted my horses in their performance for for a couple of years now. Good, good to hear. Um, so now, your horse at Rolex. Tell us a little bit about him. Uh, this year I'm riding a horse called Remington. Uh, uh, Remington's a uh, 14 or 15 year old horse, no one really knows. Uh, he's uh, an old fox hunter that I started eventing a couple of years ago when I first got to America and yep. he's uh, surprised everyone and this is his third four star. He was shortlisted for the WEG last year yep. and uh, uh, he's a good old horse. He uh, <coughs> tries very hard and, uh, and should give me a good ride tomorrow. So knowing, knowing he should give you a good ride tomorrow, is there any parts of the course that you're a little bit concerned about? Absolutely. I think any four-star course has got uh, question after question sure. and uh, the, the length of the course and the, the, the ground is a bit wet and yeah. the, the hills. and yeah, Basically, I'm pretty, uh, pretty nervous about every second of the 11 minutes 30 that it should take us to get around. There you go. Never stop riding, right? So I noticed you're a little bit on the taller side. So... Um, how important is your riding position when you're jumping, especially during these different phases of eventing? I mean, I think all, all tall people um, have their work cut out for them a little bit more. Uh, if you look at, you know, one of the greatest riders at the moment uh, is Mark Todd or William Fox Pitt, and they're very, very tall, lanky men. And I think you've got to be a little bit more in control of where your body goes yeah. because you've got a lot more weight going forward or a lot more weight going back yeah. compared to a short, fat yeah. person. Ha. So no neck strap. Um, any questions from out here? Want to throw something at us? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm not sure what you've asked him, but boy, tell me about... Um... Oh, wait. Hold on one second. <laughs> okay. Um, can you tell me about your naughtiest pony growing up? Uh, first of all, where are you from? I'm from Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah. Sarah from Richmond, Virginia has asked me about the naughtiest pony. Well, I only had one pony, and uh, his name was uh, Willie. And his show name was Willie Do It. And uh, he was 13, two hands high, and he was a Welsh mountain pony. And uh, I did my first horse trial on him, and I fell off three times <laughs> around the cross country, but still finished. And I, I think I set a record. My, my finishing score was like 390. Oh and so, so that was uh, my first pony. But th thank you. So... Let's talk a little bit about your mental preparation, um, not necessarily just for Rolex, but in general. Like, do you find that you prepare yourself differently when you're riding some of your younger horses at lower levels versus Rolex, or is it all the same sort of process? Um, I mean, I'm uh, competing a lot of horses every weekend, basically, so I'm uh, <clears throat> very uh, comfortable competing just because I do it so much. Uh, usually I'm competing a number of horses, so it's... Yeah, you know, it's, it's all happening and then all yeah. of a sudden you're dumped with one horse for five days while you're here. Yeah. So sometimes you get a little bit edgy because you don't quite know what to do with your time, right. uh, which is actually a hard thing for me. Right. Um, especially with the horse I'm riding here, doesn't need a lot of riding. So, uh, but, to, you know. Okay, so tomorrow morning, what's, what's, what's your preparation for you tomorrow morning before you go out on course? Uh, wake up, have a couple cups of coffee and then I'll walk the course by myself at yeah. uh, probably eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Then uh, I'll just chill, and uh, and then I'll probably watch on the closed circuit TV yeah. the first few riders go around. Then uh, I'll hop on the old horse about 40 minutes before I start and yeah. just cruise out there and just treat it like another horse trial. Do you have any rituals on cross-country day? 
What do you mean rituals? Like things you always do. You always put your left boot on first. Are you the old? Are you the one that always puts your horse's boots on? Like let it, traditions, superstitions, yeah. that sort of thing. You're smiling, so you got I, something, I think. Nah, I, I guarantee. If you're if you're banking on a, a ritual to get you through the finishing flags at a four star, <laughs> you're a desperate okay, person. What about so. a superstition? Something you always, always, nah, always do. Nah, not like uh, that at all. Uh, right? Absolutely not. If you're if you're superstitious, you're, they, I got I got a lot more to worry about <laughs> than what uh, what underpants are. Like wearing. jumping into the head of the lake, I imagine. Yeah. Right. Exactly. All right. Okay. Um, so, when did you realize you had a shot at turning what you loved as a kid into your profession as an adult? Um, I was quite lucky in a in a way. My both my parents were Olympians, so uh, sport was a huge part yeah. of our family. And I was a pretty terrible student, so um, <laughs> the thought of stay in school, kids. Yeah, yeah. The thought of going to university or, or college or whatever was was absolutely non-existent and uh, the day I finished high school I, I moved into the bunkhouse at the uh, the training facility in Australia and, and became a working pupil for a couple of years right. and uh, and uh, I was pretty sure what I wanted to do from day one. Yeah. Okay, so then in hindsight what do you think you would have done differently now if you had the opportunity to go back and change something throughout your career? What would I do differently? Yeah. Um, I wish I didn't sell a lot of the horses I sold, to be honest. Like, looking Which for, one? Uh, like, I had about eight or nine four-star horses in Australia, which I did a four-star on and then I sold them pretty yeah. quick. And a lot of, and now it's, you know, it's hard. To, I didn't realise how hard it was to find a good right. horse. And, uh, uh, you know, one in particular was True Blue Tuzak that I sold after I won uh, Adelaide four-star, and he's still competing now in Australia. And... Uh, and I regret selling him, so I think now I'm sort of holding on to them a bit longer just because <laughs> I understand how hard it is to get a good horse now. Right. Okay, so um, what do you think then is a critical component for success for the up-and-coming young riders and adult amateurs that, you know, maybe want to ride around Rolex one day? Uh, hard work. Mm -hmm. Got to work hard. That's, Blood, sweat and tears? Yeah, yeah, and that's, uh, that's the one prerequisite that you can't get around you've yeah. got to be willing to to try and work hard and accept disappointment and uh, keep trying again and trying and, and eventually it will work out and yeah. um, it, the sport's geared for you to, to walk away and quit just because there's so many little things that can go wrong right. so the Boyd Martin entourage tell us a little bit about that well, obviously my two cats, Manny Pack here and Costa Zoo. And the Hooters t-shirt. Yep. Yeah, so they're, they're the front runners. Uh, now I've got a great, great team behind me. Um, probably uh, my wife, Silva, is a big part of it. She's uh, my dressage coach and, um, and also keeps me uh, mentally balanced and well fed. Uh, second after that's probably Lindsay Taylor, who's my uh, head groom and bar manager and she does an extraordinary job of, of looking after the horses and organising my life. Yeah. And then I've got um, four sort of working people slash assistant riders um, in uh, Sarah Gumdiner, Caitlin Sinelman and, and Lillian Hurd and then usually one other that's part-time. Right. And uh, those girls all really uh, gather together and, and uh, you know, we compete a lot of horses right. and um, it's essentially, it's essential that the care of and the training of the horses is top class just because we're trying to compete at that level. So uh, without any of those guys, I'd be... Uh, uh, yeah, and then probably the other big part of it is Philip Dutton, who um, has taken me under his wing and taught me how to ride well and, and then also guided me through my career on right. getting horses fit. And uh, even still today, I'd be very, uh, very unsure of how to do everything without him being beside right. me. Like a mentor almost. Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm, I train at his facility and walking the course with him and, and you know, he never charges me a cent or, or does anything like he's, you know, I'd be, I'd be in debt to him for the rest of my life. Huh. Well, you can hook me up with that deal too. I wouldn't mind at all. Um, now, when you think about all the great event horses that are out there, past, present, which horse would you want to take around the course tomorrow and why? Any of them. Cross country? Yeah. Uh, probably Woodburn. Uh, yeah. Philip Dutton's last year. I think that's uh, the best galloping horse I've ever seen, cross country yeah. and, and bold, and, and especially when it's a tough, long course. Um, I'd like to ride him. Nice. I'm sure it'd be harder to ride him than I think, uh, but he looks like he's got no limit and never gets tired. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when, when, 
What is the last thing you think about before going into the dressage ring, going out of the start box, going through the jump, the stadium jumping flags? Like, is there a certain thing you always think of right before you you start? I just stay cool, you know. Um, How do you do that? Just try not to panic. And just uh, you know, it, it, things go wrong when you start panicking and and getting desperate. Yeah. So uh, if you can. Uh, manage the art of, of, of trying to stay in a stable state of mind in that moment of terror yeah. um, usually usually it, it works out alright for you got it proudest accomplishment to date what is it proudest accomplishment to date uh, probably two uh, one was winning a, the last long format four star in the world right, which was right. in 2003 yeah. and then uh, also being the highest placed American rider at the WEG last year on a, Congratulations. Yeah, on a pretty greener horse. Yeah, yeah so. good, wonderful. Um, your plans after Rolex, what do those include? Uh, going home and riding eight horses at MCTA <laughs> next weekend. So. There you go. Well, all the best to you for that. Um, d- there's a couple of people standing around. Um, if anybody has questions for Boyd, if you'd like to ask them right now... Yeah, she's somewhere here shopping. <laughs> the question was, "Is Silva here? Is Silva here?" And yeah, yeah she she's yeah. probably shopping. I hope, hopefully, with his credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? No. Okay, Boyd. Thank you so much for your time, and all the best tomorrow and on Sunday. Thanks a lot. Thanks. See ya.